in the room. Come on in the room. Bucks lose it tonight. Uh, I'm getting used to saying that. I'm getting used to saying it. Bucks lose tonight, 122-109 to the New York Knickerbockers. Um, what 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 are we doing? What 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 are we doing? Um, come on in the room. I, again, I'm not I'm not doing the doc. Is the doc? I don't because I don't know what Doc is doing. Doc ain't Doc ain't no doctor of mine because I don't know what the hell he's doing. I'm he was brought check. in here. He was brought in here to fix a basketball team. I was told somebody told me that this team needed fixing, even though they were thirty and thirteen. They needed fixing, so you had to get rid of your coach. You had to bring in a new coach, and here comes Doc Rivers to save the day. And all he has done is make this team. This is the worst the Milwaukee Bucks have looked in the last. You thought the. People would like you said people write and think pissy pieces after after 10 games with Milwaukee Bucks. Where are your think pieces now? Where are your articles now? Please tell me that your your think you should have arthritis. If you wrote an article early in this season about the Milwaukee Bucks and their coaching situation, you should have arthritis because that's your fingers should be falling off the bone. You need 50,000 words right now. I, that's what I'm, I, I sent it to you. I sent it to you to 50,000 word article. That's what I'm sentencing you to. I don't care. That's what you get. So if he wrote, send it, clip this up, send it to you. If you wrote an article, I need 50,000 more words on what's going on. Since you want to write so damn much. 122, 109. I, I, I don't got it today, fellas. I don't have it. We are live. The Cream City crossover. It's the Guru Trey Crosby third. JT. Beanie Man CK. You had to put it on twice because it was so nice. <laughs> ah, fellas, fellas, fellas. Um, where are we going? Again, get us on the Twitter at TCIIESQ. Get at me in the chat. What's going on, chat? Um, we can, like, I, let's let's talk about this thing. Uh, it was a 122 109 loss. Let's just jump into it, man, with the, um, with the game recap sponsored as always. By the law office of Daily M. Johnson. When you need defense where? Off the court. Off the court. And the Bucks needed defense off the court because they couldn't stop a nosebleed. Couldn't stop a cold. Uh, they couldn't do it. Uh, Daily M. Johnson give you criminal defense, trafficking, OWI defense, TROs, and injunctions. Um, get in touch with Daily M. Johnson. Law office Daily M. Johnson. 608-893-8370. 7-0. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm usually not on it right now. I'm thinking I wish Daily M. Johnson did employment because I, I wish he did a little employment law because I think I think uh, I think the the, the, the the Bucks might want to consult this man and talk about a few things. At this point. They they need to 100 percent service Central South Central Wisconsin. Go to his website www.dmjlaw.com. Sign up for free phone or in person consultation. Uh, it's the law office of Daily M. Johnson sponsoring our game recap as always. And it's a rough game recap. 122, 109, four straight loss for the Milwaukee Bucks. They are, I mean, they they are falling apart. They are going to limp into the playoffs quite literally and figuratively. Uh, because Chris and Chris Milton, he ain't got no teeth. He and Chris Milton up there can't pronounce no words. He, he ain't got no teeth in this ain't this is all bad. This is all bad right now. Uh seriously, I hope Chris Milton gets his gets his uh dental situation uh right, but uh, right now he old snaggle. Um 13 minutes from Chris, he fell flat. Uh, well, Dante DiVincenzo hit him in the face. Uh, he had five points, four boards, two assists. Uh, again, was injured. In the, and when he was out there, the Bucks looked like some semblance of a basketball team. I don't want to say, because, again, it was the New York Knicks, and Knicks are missing Julius Randle, and, and they have some issues going on with their basketball team. So I can't say that, hey, if Chris Milton finishes this game, if Chris Milton plays, the Bucks are going to win. Of course, they were up 11 or whatever it was the half. and get. I mean, so, again, you're up 11 at the half. You lose by, what is that, 13? 13. So you were minus twenty, what is it, twenty twenty four in the in the in the uh, in the half, something like that, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's that, that's not good. Giannis, uh, again, he always mess around, and get a triple double, twenty eight fifteen and eight. I don't know though, the twenty eight fifteen and eight, it felt quiet. It felt like a quiet twenty eight fifteen and eight. Like there was really there was that moment in the second quarter where I thought Giannis, I mean, he dominated with a group of straight. He was out there with a whole bench unit and absolutely dominated the second quarter. Um, to get the Bucks the lead, want to, to get them a, a lead at the half. I think it was like sixty-one to fifty. Uh, but that second half was very quiet to me um, from Giannis. And even though he, he put up some gaudy numbers, he had some turnovers and whatnot. Uh, just didn't work out for him. Thirty-eight minutes for Giannis tonight. Twenty-eight minutes for Brook Lopez. Thirteen and five, four of eight. 
uh, two or six from three. I mean, he he was okay. He was, he was decent. Uh, but, again, just where's the impact? Malik Beasley, nine points, three assists. He was okay offensively, three or six from the field, three or six from three. Uh, but, again, he had the primary match with the primary responsibility on the guy that absolutely cooked us all night, Jalen Brunson. And, yeah, man, he, he was barbecue chicken at the defense with five fouls. Uh, he, 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 got, he, he got his lunch money took. He absolutely got, got his lunch money took. He got, his, uh, got everything handed to him. 23-6-4 from Damian Lillard tonight, 4 of 11. Really, I mean, he just feasted at the free throw line. One of seven from three from Damian Lillard. He was 14 and 15 from the line. So he did get to the free throw line tonight. Um, but again, it was a quiet 23 from, from Damian Lillard. Uh, and, and, you know, and it was, again, most of it went to the, was at the free throw line. He shot 36% from the field. It's, um, and what's, what's today's date? Well, today, oh, it's today, it's today four, four, eight. Four, hey, we all, yeah, it's four, four, seven. Four, seven. So Dame, Dame is shooting. Dame is, is shooting the, the dates of the calendar uh, almost right now. Four, four, eleven for Damian Lillard. And uh, we already passed January, but that's who did from the uh, from the three point line. Pat Cotton does, <laughs> uh, Pat Cotton, shot Tuesday. Right. Does Pat does yeah. whatever the hell Pat does. 31 minutes, five points. He running around out there. So, again, I'm, I'm glad that he. He is a healthy young man. I'm glad for Pat Condon that he can stay healthy and that he's being paid to just run up and down a basketball floor. So again, that's a that he has a help. Pat Condon has a, a, the best job in the world. He's getting paid millions of dollars to literally run up and down. A, I mean, it, it's it's great. I mean, I I, I can't I, I can't fault him um, for what he does and how he's getting himself paid. Bobby Porter's 24 and five, 10 for 15. He shot. He he basically kept the Bucks in the basketball game, honestly, in the second half because he shot the ball so well. Nothing from Crowder, um, two points from Green, nothing from Jackson. Only plays four minutes, uh, and then the, the bench uh, scrub got in. Trump got at the end of the game. Isaiah Hartenstein, eighteen. Dante Divincenzo lit the Bucks up with twenty six, eight of fourteen again. So how many times we, we talk about this all the time? Guards outplaying Damian Lillard tonight. You had two that outplayed him. Da- Damian Lillard got outplayed by Dante Divincenzo. And Jalen Brunson. How about that? Brunson, 43, 8, and 6. He was the best player on the floor. We talked about how can the Bucs win a championship? We got out of the best player on the floor. Best player on the floor tonight, no, was undoubtedly was Jalen Brunson. The Bucs couldn't do anything with him. Now, again, some of that is because the Bucs allow guys to score at these astronomical rates, and it, it's just bad. Um, OJ Ananobi, four points. He was getting kind of bullied by Giannis for, for a lot of the game. Uh, Josh Hart, seven points, nine boards. Uh, Deuce McBride got eight points. And then uh, Bogdan, uh, 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 Boban, is that, no, what's the man's name? Boyan Bogdanovich. Uh, that one, he had, he, he had a nice r- little stretch there. I think that was in the third quarter that he had, or I think it was a little second, a little bit of third. He had, he had a really nice stretch. Mm-hmm. Put up 15.6 and nine from the field, very efficient. Um, but again, tonight, you know, the, the Bucks on a night where you have to have a win, on a night where you, J, uh, JT, you called this a must win game, did you not? You I said because uh, now we're in the quicksand, right? And last week it was up to our knees, now it's up to our chest at this point. Like, listen, we are, we are in the quicksand. There's you cannot deny it, but I'm gonna let you finish. You called it a must win game, the Bucks did not win the game. Uh, they are now 47 and I think 31 now. Again, we're going to get to the playoff picture. Playoffs. We're going to get to the playoff picture because it the 4-5 the, the seed is 100% in play for the Milwaukee Bucks. I don't think anybody anticipated them losing at this rate, uh, especially with the schedule that they had coming. And, again, you got Boston on Tuesday night. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it, but but it it, it it looks bleak. I have a I, – now, for whatever reason, I don't know what Boston's going to do. They could come to Milwaukee and say, yeah, we, we're going to rest some guys because we – they they have locked up the one seed in the in the Eastern Conference, and they'll still probably win. Well, they and probably <laughs> would. Yeah, I, I would not be surprised if Sam Hauser and Peyton Pritchard uh, have thirty apiece, and 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 that's how that game goes. Um, but again, tonight was was so just going on tonight. First half I thought was decent. It was a it was a solid first half of basketball because again the New York Knicks are a very and, and let me make no mistake about it. This is not a shot at the New York Knicks. I'm sure their fan base is hooting and hollering, and they're, they're fired up about beating the Milwaukee Bucks. You're beating a Milwaukee Bucks team that is really like, like they are really the Milwaukee Bucks are not are not playing good basketball right now. So again, congratulations on the win. But to me, this is more about the Milwaukee Bucks than anything the Knicks are doing. So the Knicks had to go out and get a win, but I don't think the Knicks are a very good basketball team. The Milwaukee Bucks right now just suck. They the Milwaukee Bucks are are, are they are tr- trash. They they just again we just lost to the Raptors, the Wizards, and the Grizzlies. That's the level of teams 
that's like that. That you know, again, the Bucks have the names Giannis and Dame were out there, but you know, my my kids they were just watching Space Jam, the monsters that took the energy. So I don't know what's going on, but you're not facing a very good Milwaukee Bucks basketball team. You're facing a trash team. So the Bucks are not only just playing down the competition; they are that competition that is down. First half I thought was decent. You know, Giannis led that second unit. The third quarter, the Bucks just came out jacking up shots. They came out just, I mean, just, I think the first three shots, it was a, I think it was a, because Chris was out at that point. I believe it was a Pat Connaughton missed three, a Brooke Lopez missed three, and then a Dame Lillard missed three. I think those were the first three shots of the second half. Three different guys jacking up threes and missing them. And again, I go back to Doc Rivers after timeouts. I go back to Doc Rivers after half. After any break, when Doc Rivers comes back, I've never, I just, I, I said this most of the time, I've just never seen a team that goes into a huddle, gets a plan, and comes out and, like use that's your, your bread and butter. You come yeah. out and execute the first time you come out. Like that's that's what you call the timeout for to get yourself gathered. They don't do that. They get absolutely ran in the third quarter. Um, let's see. The, I think the 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 some the, the yeah. So twenty four points in the third, twenty four points in the fourth. The Bucks scored forty eight points in the second half after scoring sixty one in the first half. Um, and so, but 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 you know, going without that, it's one thing if you just can't score but you can't get stops either i mean it was the bucks gave up 39 in the third quarter 33 in the fourth quarter so what happened was not only could the bucks not score the offense looked directionless they looked they played one-on-one but i mean it was pick your poison night for the new york knicks like they inside outside jalen brunson cooked any and everybody that was on him and i this last thing i say before i let you go jt the new york knicks look intentional and jalen brunson in particular looks intentional in finding his mismatches and exploiting them now again, the difference may be that the he, he he sees a lot of a lot of guys on the floor as exploitable players. So when he sees Dame on him, I'm going. If he sees Malik Beasley, I'm going. Oh, Bobby, you come out, I'm going. Brooke Lopez, you're, I'm I'm going. It, Pat, Pat, I'm going. Every, every anybody he sees, he sees food every single time. And you, that level of aggression, Damian Lillard, what doesn't have it? Damian Lillard gets Hartenstein on him and doesn't like literally piece him up and, and give buckets. That's the difference right now. And again, I'm not saying that's the only difference because the Bucks have a lot of issues. But when I'm talking about, because I know a lot of the, a lot of the Dame people like to say, "Well, look at Damian Lillard," and I'm not blaming Dame, but if you want to go that route, I'm just saying, look at Damian Lillard and look at Jalen Brunson. You can't tell me, forget everybody else on the floor, forget the Bucks. You can't tell me Jalen Brunson ain't outplaying him. You just can't. Like that's like that's a one on one mono e mono guy, and Jalen Brunson looks like ten times the player right now, Damian Lillard. And I'm not, I'm just giving that out because people act like. We're just disrespectful. I'm, I'm not even saying. I'm just saying that's what it, that's what it looks like. Um. So again, the Bucks lose tonight, one twenty two, one hundred nine. Um. Couldn't get stops. Couldn't score when they needed to. Couldn't do anything well. Uh. This Bucks team is in trouble. I'm hitting the panic button. One twenty two, one hundred nine. JT. That's what I saw. What you see? Just a whole lot of bad, bad. Right. It's like uh, what my man Jameis Winston say. Pain. Right. Just pain everywhere. Pain. Pain. <laughs> This is, is exactly what this. This was absolutely pitiful. I, yeah, I, I had hope in that first half. A little, some, some hope in that first half, especially like you said, Giannis coming out playing with the, you know, playing with the second team, showing some fight. Brunson lit us up in that first quarter. I think he put sixteen or seventeen on our heads, and literally, I mean, Malik Beasley out there looking like what's your man's name? Uh, what's up, brother? Uh, right here. Malik Beasley out there looking like that, right? Like, right with, we'd have been better off having him out there playing D to Malik Beasley. I don't know what the hell that was, right? And then Dame, Dame as well. Dame looked helpless. They absolutely stunk. You come out of you come out of the break, right? So the Bucks were up nine at the half. What was it like sixty to fifty one, something like that, right? At the half, if the Knicks come out and go on a twenty to six run, they just go crazy at the beginning of that third quarter. I don't know what the hell the Bucks were doing, just lollygagging, running down, you know, jogging down the court, chucking up random shots. I mean, the only decent thing to come out of that was obviously Bobby Portis had ten in that quarter, and he was hitting, he was hitting his threes, he was making plays. Bobby Portis was the only guy who was swinging back because the the Knicks, the Knicks were really coming at us, and we just, you know, just very lackadaisically played through that quarter. Fourth quarter, they start out with a fifteen to four run. And we still are doing more of the same thing. Again, you saw Bobby fighting a little bit, Giannis fighting a little bit, but you know, Giannis had, would you say, 28, 15, and 8? And, and it was like the least impactful 28, 15, and 8, some of which because they were responding to everything that we – and some, so we just couldn't get anything going. And this was embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for Doc. I'm embarrassed for this team. Doc might be right when he's like, this team doesn't give a damn. Well, maybe they don't, right? Maybe he doesn't either. Um 
Glad to see Andre Jackson Jr. and A.J. Green play over Gallinari. I believe they both played in that first half before Gallinari even checked in, which is beautiful. And Gallinari didn't even check in at all. But still, you know, definitely. We, so it looks like we got that figured out. Unfortunately, the minute splits for those two underwhelming i don't know why when you when you when you saw the miss when you saw that we were pretty much inept in defending the perimeter why andre jackson jr didn't get more minutes it's not like malik Beasy was really bringing anything to the table what did he finish with tonight uh yeah he finished okay he finishes three for six okay great right well, he gave up i don't know probably almost every three that the uh that the knicks made um but this was pitiful. This was pitiful. We did not have to lose this game. Side note, I feel terrible for Chris. I feel bad for Chris, right? Because all these injuries are not his fault, but just just one thing after another for him, you know, especially when he starts playing well and gets momentum going. And then, you know, to make it a, the rub salt in the moon, who elbows him in the face? Who hit that man in the face? Dante. Uh, man, right? Who fried us tonight Dante. from three? Dante. It's just like, man, it's the gift that keeps on giving. That's what I saw tonight, and I hope I don't see it again, but unfortunately I'm not confident that that's it. By the way, side note, we got three teams with 46 wins in the East, and they want that ass right now. We are in rough shape. We are in rough shape, and I think that second that, that second seed is good as gone at this point. Um, so. Before you go, Chris, just just just, just a note that um, – so I'm getting a, a note from our, produ- our people at 97.3 who are at the press conference waiting on Doc Rivers that Doc Rivers has still not come to the podium – um, and they, they, he said, this is the longest we've ever waited for Doc to come to a podium. He should have been out here at least about 10 minutes ago. So I don't know if that has changed mm-hmm. since you since you were talking, but that was a text I just got about five minutes ago that Doc Rivers has still not come to the podium for his press conference. Uh, go ahead, Nick. I'm at Chris. We better hear we better hear belt to ass in the in the locker rooms and in the opposite way. We we gotta hear Doc putting a belt to ass on, on our guys right now. Uh no, look, we've done four in a row losing post games and I was just telling the guys like after a while it just it's not much you can analyze. This is just who we are at this point when you drop four in a row to, to three bad teams and then one team that, that you should be able to beat and you had the 11 point lead at halftime uh for me look i just think defensively we we were overrating the hell out of this team uh when they had that little stretch of holding teams under 100 points like they were picking us apart in every single way we had uh, deuce mcbride coming out in the fourth quarter and light us up for a quick five and we're turning the ball over he gets the ball in transition like that's stuff you can't have when you're trying to win basketball games Brooke Lopez, once again, not being aggressive enough, rebounding, tipping the ball out of bounds, tipping the ball to the Knicks players. They get it in transition. I don't like that. Um, Him in that pick and roll, that that pick and roll defense, drop coverage has been a problem all year. It just got masked a little bit um, by the the win streaks and stuff like that. But tonight it was Hartenstein and Brunson just cooking that thing. Like, you – Brooke wouldn't step up and they were getting these floaters and that that was the story that was the reason they were able to get so many easy buckets and and scoring just felt like it came at ease for the Knicks and, and us we just have no plan uh, coming out of halftime I just don't understand what you're doing uh, you have an 11 point lead and you're playing like you're, you're down 40 um, that's that's on the coach that's on the players to recognize that they need to get better shots get it into the ball of Giannis or, or get it in the hands of Giannis's uh, hands and and let him work so that you can maintain the lead I was telling Trey also like this team they they don't value possessions the turnovers you look at Giannis you look at what Dame did tonight they it seems like they don't care they're just out there playing pickup ball and and that's what ultimately kills you uh, a lot of times but yeah that's what i saw four four straight losing uh post games is not something that's fun and it's, it's not something we like doing but um you know it is what it is i guess this might just be who we are yeah no a, a, a thousand percent you know that's part of that that's part of what what's happening part of the problem is that the milwaukee bucks they, they don't value possessions again you see it over and over and over again um, like I said, from my, from a point guard, from Giannis too. Um, both of those guys combined four turn again. They, the, the assist to turnover ratio is not great. Six assists for Damian Lillard, four turnovers. Giannis had eight assists and four turnovers tonight. And so s- some of the problems that you saw that that took place earlier in the season have come back, and they again they're starting to bite and kill the Milwaukee Bucks. And I, you know, I I don't know. Again, we talked about it before. We're we're out of answers. I don't have the answers. I don't know what's happening with this team. I don't know. Can they even fix again? You talk about five, six games. Can you even fix it? What, 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 what do you do at this point? But again, this show tonight, again, I, I don't know that, like you talked about, Chris, I don't think there has to be much analysis about what happened tonight about the, the New York Knicks. This is a, the Milwaukee Bucks have an internal issue 
again, because when you're losing the Wizards and the Grizzlies, it's not again. This game is not is not what it's about. There's something going on internally. Remember Doc Rivers in the last press conference said that a referee came up to him and said, "I feel the weight of the pressure." I, what he said something like, I, "I can feel your team seems heavy right now." A referee told Doc Rivers, "The team seems like there's a lot of weight on y'all's shoulders That's right bad. now." That, That's like, bad. I, Man, if you don't get that a call a foul, but you sitting there evaluating the way like that's what I'm, but and, it is palpable. And I, I'll say this too to anybody who was at five star form tonight. Um, I, I'm sorry, shame on you, shame on you, because you should have been booing. You should have been booing. You there, there are absolutely times and again. I'm not saying you got to go out and be like Philadelphia Eagles fans and throw batteries and throw snowballs at Santa Claus. And I, I'm not saying you got to do all that and 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 berate your own players. But there are times when you need to come out and you need to let your player, let, let the team know, let the organization know what the, y'all y'all are stinking it up right now. And again, I, I saw when they when 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 uh, Doc Rivers brought the bench unit and waved the white flag and had it, they were clapping like, "Oh yeah, good good job." They were clapping. They were, they were clapping like the Iowa fans were when Caitlin Clark like a damn curtain. You get on curtain call losing it, losing four games in a row. This ain't no man. Oh yeah, good. Good season, boys. No, 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 no. They should have been booed off the floor tonight. That's what should have happened. So again, the five, the five serves losing his luster. That ain't like the Browns. That should, that should have, that that crowd should have been hot and angry at what they saw because you're wasting your money. You, I mean, you're wasting your money. I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting everything to watch this basketball team. And again, if you don't give a damn, why should I? That that's what should have happened. That's what I thought should happen. I, I, I won. I mean, I, I thought it was going to happen. I was like, there's no boo birds at all. Anybody, nobody cares around there. Nobody cares. Everybody, what y'all doing? Y'all drinking? What y'all doing? Did you drink again? Y'all eating food? And you're just relaxing? Watch the in game entertain? I, what, what's going on? Why are people not being booed? To, to be fair, maybe they were walking to their cars at that point. Maybe. maybe they just said, you know what? Right, about a good five six minutes out. This is this is this is terrible, and they just kept this thing pushing. They saw that. If, if they saw it on TV that this team had, if we saw on TV this team had absolutely no fight, right? Then I, they certainly probably did too. I mean, this. I agree with you. You you. I feel bad for our fans, for, for the for the Milwaukee Bucks fans that went and watched this and pay and paid money for these tickets and just saw this team go out there and literally go through the motions because everybody stunk from the from, from 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 Doc to the to the to the equipment manager. Everybody stunk tonight. And I hope side note has Doc come out yet for his press conference? Uh, I'm I'm not I'm not no. sure if Doc Rivers is coming well, out. Know, well, you know what? Well, he, he better stay wherever he's at. I'd be surprised if the team's even in the locker room still because I it, it does feel like this team has checked out. Something something's not working. Right. Either he just doesn't want to make adjustments or they don't listen. Right. Or he doesn't listen to them. Something's something's not working here. But this is this is your worst. This, I mean, honestly, this is one of your worst case scenarios at this point. I'll, I'll just touch on no boo birds and, and Pfizer. Look, you cannot be complacent with how this Bucks team is playing. You, you cannot you cannot be complacent with winning a championship uh, uh, three years ago. You, you just can't because they've showed you that they're they're continuing to try to win. They've showed you by firing Adrian Griffin, uh, firing Mike Budenholzer, acquiring Dame Lillard, that, they, that there is a championship title window in here. And it hasn't sufficed through the past three years. So take that with what you will and make sure that you're not getting complacent as a fan because this isn't enough. It's not. Uh, so Todd Merrill in the chat has said now that um... – that that he had that Doc Rivers has come out. So again, so Doc okay. Rivers is out now talking. Wonder what he's saying. Uh, let Todd also checks in. Let's let's go to the chat. Uh, let's talk about this. Let's see what's happening here. Because again, I'm out of answers. So let's see. Maybe you guys have answers. What are your thoughts? This is uh, this show is about you, and we want to know what you're thinking. Todd Merrill says at this point, sit everyone against Boston, and try to win against Magic. Uh, Todd always giving us the like. I, I, Todd, and I I I I, I like you because we all you know we, we we talk a lot we talk on Twitter as well. But Todd is all Todd is like he's like a doomsdayer, but he's also like gives these ideas that like he's the he, Todd. If you remember, God wants to trade Damian Lillard too. So I mean, it, you know, Todd's always off off the rails. I don't think you sit everyone again. No, you need to try to win every single game at this point. I no, I'm not sitting over because again, that's that's not guaranteed either. You would have thought if if that was the case, acting that's that's my only thing on that. And again, I, I don't take that seriously, but still. You can't even pretend like, oh, well, let's go try to beat a lesser opponent. The time for that was three games ago when you had the Wizards, Grizzlies, and the, and the uh, whoever, and Toronto. So you can't even, you can't bank on, all right, let's just, we're going to lose the Boston, let's go beat Orlando. No, 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 you can't bank on that at all. 
Um, well, now you got the hardest remaining schedule in the league, right? I saw I saw that during the game. He said the Bucks, the, the the remaining schedule for the Bucks is the hardest in the league at this point. And the, and you're 100 percent right. Last week, if you'd have won all last week, you could have maybe sat sat a couple folks this week, got some. But now, I mean, you're in free fall. Um, King of King says Chris is old, slow, and soft. That's a man. That's a that's a mean comment tonight after Chris falls with a tooth. I mean, uh, this is a mean comment. They don't play hockey. That ain't, uh, that ain't, that ain't nothing normal for basketball. Uh, Seth, the, Seth, the man says, I can't even get mad anymore. I'm done. That's, and yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I get that too. Um, Derek Mallet says, we really got Dame on his last leg. Dog really getting busted by every starting guard in the league and doesn't respond. Brunson owned him all year. That is correct. Like, that's not a, that's not a lie. Green Ranger says, it just doesn't seem like Dame wants to be on the team. I don't know if it's that or is it just, or is I don't again I, I I can't I have to see it in the playoffs before I say he's washed. I, I just can't bring myself to say Dame is washed because I've seen there have been moments and I, I I don't know. I can't I just can't do it until I see it in the playoffs. But again, if Dame looks like this in the playoffs, that W word is gonna come up and we're gonna yeah, washed is is definitely w, that, that T word is coming up. Tra- yeah, right. That, all of, all I, you can't, I mean how do you avoid that, right? If he, how do you and I, and I hate it, right? Because I don't want to come at Dame because people got offended. And like you said, some of our some of our listeners probably saw the battle royale of us last week when you know Trey put the powder on the hand and smacked Buddy, and then I came out and I was in, and Chris came out the back with a chair. Y'all know what I'm talking about on Twitter? Just the ignorance. Anyway, um, I hate to say that, but if if, it, if if there's a first round exit this year. It feels to me like almost everybody on that team may be available in the trade. You got to uh, blow this thing up. Well, well, yeah, and and well, that 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 is definitely something that is definitely going to be talked about if if that takes place. With the yeah. first round. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, that that's 100 percent going to be talked about. Somebody else, I, I saw somebody talking about on on social media that like the Bucks basically waited too long to you know they got in that phase of they won a championship and they held on too long. But it's like I, I hear you, but I feel like they they. They tried to. I think that's what they tried to avoid when they traded Drew Holiday. Maybe they just traded the wrong guy. That maybe maybe, maybe that was the issue. Um, Mac for better tomorrow says uh, Knicks and Bucks look pretty much the same to me. What makes you think the Knicks are worse? I'm, I'm just going off what I've seen. For the, uh, yes, right now, yes, they look the same, and the, and the, the Bucks are a worse team. I would agree right now. I'm talking about from what I've seen all year. Yeah, you know, no, the Bucks are a better team. They have better players overall. But yes, no, right, right now, yeah, and I guess the point I was really making is I don't think the Knicks are all that good. Like my the level, like I don't think the Knicks can even win a championship. Like if you told me, that, hey, you got a thousand dollars a day, you can put it on the Knicks or the Bucks to win a championship, I'd still put it on the Bucks because I think that because at least I think if the Bucks got to their level, the Bucks have a chance. I don't even think the Knicks have a chance. That's that's kind of where where I was going with that. K and A family says Dame is hot garbage right now. Uh, uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Arsenal McGowan says went from a roller coaster season to a big drop. Maybe we're in the big drop um, mm-hmm. right now. That's what it. That's what it kind of seems like. Um, D Cole, that hill. D Cole one two three says, can we put? Can we please get Beasley out of the starting lineup? I don't care about him being a good shooter. We need a defensive minded guard. Uh, now again, so and we've talked about this before, but I mean, for for um, the only viable options there is what AJ Green. Because again, you don't. That's the thing. You don't have these guard. Like you don't have these wing defenders. Your best one is is like a is like a legit wing is Jay Crowder mm-hmm. or Andre Jackson Jr. Who again is a net negative offensive. So I, and you saw you saw Doc put AJ Ajax in for like five or six minutes. Um, it didn't really do anything. He didn't really go. He didn't really do it for any extended period of time. But yeah, I, 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 like I said, we're I, I think we're out of answers. That's that's the whole kind of kind of thing, and 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 where I am on this. And then uh, KMLM92 says, "What happened to the Giannis that was ready to run through walls? Uh, he was just I think he said he was wandering around in the fourth. He was kind of, like I said, he, he he was he was kind of uh, passive. I thought Dame I thought Dame has always been passive for whatever reason." I think Giannis, I mean, the same thing, and we know he's dealing with some injuries, and they Doc Rivers came out today and said that he's dealing with injuries and said apparently he was supposed to be on like not he didn't he doesn't have a minutes restriction, but they said he's going they're gonna monitor his minutes. But you can't monitor his minutes like the buck and I saw the other people, oh, they're trying to avoid such and such. No, they're not. They're not trying to avoid anybody, they are just playing out sucking and losing. Like that's like that's the problem. But anyway, I I, I wonder like give me like guys, like where like okay, let me ask you this. Let's just go this. Are you hitting the panic button? And if there's a panic meter from one to ten, 
Where are you right now at panic with what is this five games left to go in the, re- in the regular season? Where are you? Where are you on the panic meter? Eight. I, you, 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 I don't see how you could be less than a seven at this point. The reason being is that look at these last four games. Look at the way the Bucks have lost. They look hapless. They look like they don't have any fight. They don't really look like they want to compete at this point. It, I'm not seeing anything improve under Doc. I've literally seen a, a, a regression over the last week with this squad. And it's not like things aren't tight right now. Things are extremely tight right now. The Bucs got 47 wins, right? Cleveland, New York, and Orlando have 46. We got we, we can't even take advantage of who lost today? Cleveland was it Cleveland that lost today? Cleveland did lose today. Cleveland so did right, lose today. like Cleveland lost today. We couldn't even take advantage of we can't even put we we can't even put space in between us and them. And 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 right now the possibility of getting that fourth seed is definitely a lot higher than it was last Tuesday. And you know, I, I just I'm not sure these guys want it. And that's the problem. Is it just like I don't think anybody can say no, they're just playing hard, they're just getting out played, they're passionate. And now you're talking about Giannis potentially being hurt. Not good if Giannis is hurting right now and really needs to sit, but he can't. This is just and then the last thing I'm gonna say, okay, it's nowhere near the last thing I'm gonna say. But um, <laughs> but you know, when you talk about options on the perimeter, options, we don't have options. Who do we play? Who do we play? Who do we play? Well, part of the reason why we don't have no damn options is because Doc wouldn't play some of these guys on the bench earlier in the season. So now you want to throw them out there now and hope they look good. Okay, give them, you know, when, when it's important, all right, well, we're going to give them a run now. No, you should have been planning and developing these guys 30-something games ago. And then you talk about, is this a legitimate option to throw out there? Sure, right? You feel a hell of a lot more comfortable with it if you weren't red shirt in the the season. I'm so done with Doc. I'm sorry. I am off the train. I, I can't. I can't do it. For me, I think my panic meter is at a, a nine, and I'll tell you why. When I start to lose the expectation to win, when I start going into these games and start watching and, and seeing, okay, we have post game tonight, we've got a Bucks game tonight, they're playing the Knicks, and I really don't know if we're going to win this game. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes – when I'm not surprised that you're losing to the Toronto Raptors, when I'm not surprised that you blow an 11-point lead at, at the half and you come out with no urgency, that's going to raise some panic for sure because I don't know how consistent this team can put wins together in the playoffs. So you, you get a tough matchup in the first round and they, they roll out this – shit of a product then I, yo I'm, I'm officially panicked i just I, look like i said not a lot to uh, analyze from this game it's just like we we don't get the contributions that you need as a as a team to to will you to victories right now and and from the coach as well you don't get those contributions after timeouts after halftime after uh after quarters and so no urgency uh no consistency panic meter out of nine Sorry for cussing. <laughs> um, oh man, so you're eight. Uh, Chris is at a nine. I, I'm at a. I, so here's the thing. I, I'm at a seven. And here's and, and so again, I think rightfully everybody's concerned, and and we are. But my my main issue, and one of well, I guess not my main. One of my main issues is why does this team not play like their hair is on fire? Like 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 why? That and that's what and that's what you have to have in the playoffs. Like, why are they not coming out? Why is everything we're walking the ball up? We chilling. Everything. It's almost like like there are sometimes when and I do get it where veteran teams, veteran led teams, want to give off this presence that hey, everything's okay, everything's all right. We're not panicking. We're good. And and you know you and and a lot of veteran teams do that and they walk teams down or like there are so many like think about this, John, Chris. If this was twenty games ago. I, 30 games ago, and we were in, let's say we were in, uh, uh, um, you know, December. I guarantee you we all would have felt like you're down and forth. We would have felt like, hey, they're good. Ain't no re- there's no reason to panic. This Milwaukee Bucks team, though, when you've lost four in a row and you're in danger of getting to the 4-5 seed, you need to come out with the – and I get it. It's the regular season, so you don't have the same – it doesn't have the same playoff field. You need to come out like these games are are just so important. And what I mean, because I don't mind losing, but when I don't feel like the effort is there, because again, and we talked about Doc, and we can blame Doc and talk about, but does it even does it feel like the loose balls go to the Bucks? I give there was a play I think in the third quarter, second I can't remember where Dame. Okay, I I, 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 I remember this is one of Dame, Dame threw threw the ball away. It was a turnover. I mean, it was it was a terrible pass because he threw it and the dude like jumped and caught it at half court. I don't know what he saw, but he was trying to throw. Dame wasn't even past half court. And they came down, Knicks came down, I believe they missed the layup or missed the shot. 
And they ended up getting like two or three rebounds, long rebounds, and they ended up making the layup. They ended up scoring on that possession. But it's like, where's the urgency to get the ball back? Where? Why are people not? I mean, I bodies should hit the floor. Not it, you shouldn't only hit the floor because somebody hit you in the face and knocked your tooth out. People should be on the ground nonstop for this team. They, I, there was a term, and and again, another another guy. Sam, I, hey, my apology forms might be deep this year because I, I got I might have an AG apology form and Quada just kept. I might have a Jason Kidd apology form too. Don't oh, tell okay. anybody. I mean, Jason Kidd got these got these Dallas Mavericks. I mean, I don't know if you saw. I watched a Dallas game. I'm talking. I mean, the energy, the energy of guys like racing up and down. They look like they were frantic. That's what this Milwaukee Bucks team. Is. They need to look like. Oh my god. Like how Andre Jackson looked in the, the last game, the 15 minutes that he played, where it's like he's all he he's so far all over the floor. You're like, what the hell's going on? That's what you need to see more of, and you don't see it from this Milwaukee Bucks team. And there are other teams in the league that do it. You saw Hartenstein. I mean, just it's all effort. It's all effort. How, how tall is Mitchell? How tall is Mitchell Mitchell Robinson? Ooh, probably like six nine, maybe six ten. Is he six? Mitchell Robinson? I think, is is seven, is I think I think he's seven footer, seven but what? Well, may, maybe he's six ten, six eleven. I think maybe like six ten, six eleven, something like that, right? But it's like, and I get it, Brooke. You're not gonna be able to jump like Mitchell Robbins. I get that, but it's like some of that just the effort that I'm going to go after every single board that's here. Where are the guys like that for the Bucks? They don't have them. They're not. They're 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 not. They're not out there doing it. Um, and and it's it's very fr- it's just very very frustrating. King Saw says. Bobby Portis is the is the only one. Only one doing what? I mean, I, I know where, where we're at there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Hey, he was fight, he was he was fighting tonight. Bobby Portis was fighting tonight. Bobby Portis was doing what he could to try to keep this team in the game. I gotta I gotta give credit to Bobby that, especially in that especially in that second half in that third quarter and, and for part of the fourth as well. I thought Bobby Portis was fighting, was trying to respond, but like his teammates were not. It, I, think I mean, they, it, no. shots. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. He was trying, yeah. like I, I give him that. But again, you, gotta, plays, but... you gotta do it on defense side of the ball. Like you got, you have to do it on defense side of the ball. To me, to yeah, me. the whole unit, yeah, but the whole unit wasn't doing that. Yeah, the whole unit was just letting folks run. Like, well, okay, they, they was playing that Swiss cheese D. All right, well, we'll get I, it back I on think, the next. I think there is a sense of entitlement though when you talk about you know the, the players not being able to get on the floor for loose balls and stuff like that. I just think they've let all the hype, everything, get to their head and. At this point, you know, you mix that in with being a little old, too. They just – I don't know if they have that intensity anymore, which sucks because that's normally what this Bucks team has been known for in the past years where, where they've been such a scrappy team and, a, at least in the regular season, um, been so good at, at making sure those 50-50 balls are theirs, and, and it's just not there anymore, I don't think. Well, and, well that's why I was going to go back to the 50-50 balls because Jason Kidd called them when he was here. He called them 100-100 balls. And the Bucks have to go back to that. And 100, 100 ball means 50. I, I, I can't. All these got to be ours. Every single, every time the ball's loose, we need to go get it. So it needs, uh, it can't be 50 50. That's the mentality that you have to bring, that dog mentality. That, uh, and again, maybe some, we need Pat Beverly back. You know, I know he was out. Um, and so that was part of it. We, we got, I, I just don't, I don't know where the energy is. I don't know where it comes from. I think you have to play these young guys. And I'm not understanding why the Bucks are not. I would throw out, what's my man's name? Chris Livingston. I throw him out there. I got to get fresh legs and people that are going to run and give 100%. Um, apparently, and I, was, I know Todd came in the chat and said it too, but Chris Milton is uh, doing dental. He's doing oral surgery right now. Ooh, Ooh. freak, man. Uh, <laughs> I've taken a shot to the mouth in the first half. Uh, Doc Rivers says he just can't catch a break. Um, yeah, so, man, it's it, it's just amazing coming and doing these post game shows and 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 seeing what's happened. Let's see. Let's let's see what they're saying on Twitter. Twitter is always like Twitter is definitely a, usually a, 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 a our crowd kind of here in the, in the YouTube chat uh, is a little rowdy, but uh, but the Twitter chats are always even rowdier. Uh, at he Manson says the Bucks look gassed, old, uh, and mentally whipped right now. I also believe it will take uh, only it'll take. It, well, I also believe it will take only take one breakthrough game to turn things. Yes, it's bad, but we've also seen this team at its best. And no, this is out of sorts. People forget this. Uh, and it's bad. No sugarcoating. Doc needs to get everything together and figure it out. It's really on him right now. I believe they will get it together. I also believe it's better this is happening right now. Yes, it sucks. I don't want to blame anyone for worrying, but I'm betting on this team getting it fixed. Let's stay right there, and I'll, and I'll pose that to you guys. Because we have seen the Milwaukee Bucks, especially under Mike Budenholzer, which a lot of people are saying, why do we let him go? 
but we've seen the Bucks look very good, and then in the playoffs, like the the level takes a you take a step down at some point in the playoffs. Do you think it's good? Do you take that approach that maybe a fire will be lit because they are playing poorly headed into the playoffs? Do you do you do you agree with that assessment? No. What? <laughs> what? How much sense does that make? We're gonna play. Oh, well, yeah, we're gonna get it back. We're gonna figure this thing out. No, we stink right now. The car is smoking. The roof flew up. The engine is burning a little bit. It's about to be engulfed in flames. And you talk about uh, uh, leadership. Who the hell's the leader on this team? Giannis seemed like. Look, I'm I'm cool getting mine. Right. I don't know where Dame's at, man. I, who I, I have Dame, no right now, Dame's just doing well to show up for work. Right. I'm just being real. Like Dame is doing well to show up for work, you know, do what he can, kind of keep this thing pushing, you know, but for the most part, right. Who, where's the leader? I, I know Pat Bev is out right now. I think Bobby's trying, uh, doc. I, I, I would, I would love to see doc's press conference tonight. Cause what's the question? Cause I, I and, and I, and I just hope that somebody asks, is asking him hard questions, right. Nobody's being charmed by the, by the, uh, by the little smile and doc, you know, uh, Rub his rub his head with his hand, whatever that is. Yeah, no, I hope I hope they ask him some hard questions, but they're not. No, this team has zero momentum right now. They look hapless. They look like they don't want to. They look like they don't care. Not so much about it. Not so much about like oh, uh, you know, they're not worried about the. They look like they don't care. They look like a bunch of people. You know those people at work you work with. It's like I'm gonna get paid anyway. I ain't, I ain't tripping. I, I'm gonna get paid. What, what 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 day them checks come out? All the checks come out on Friday. Damn, it's Tuesday. I really don't feel like being here today. They look like they got a bunch of those out there, a bunch of folks acting like that. And no, this is not, I don't think this is going to get fixed because I don't think you have the infrastructure to do it. I don't think Doc is that guy that's your leader. I don't think Giannis is that guy that's going to be your leader, right? I think it's too much to ask him to start grabbing folks' necks and getting in people's face and being like, yo, you better act like you want to be here. I don't think the players have that threat of, hey, we might lose our jobs. We might lose our house. We might lose whatever. No, I don't think this is going to get fixed at this point. If, if it doesn't get fixed before the end of the playoffs now, or before the beginning of the playoffs now, if they win a bunch of games in a row coming here on out and they look like they, they, they give a damn, maybe that'll change. But right now, no, I don't think this is going to get fixed in the playoffs and work out. And I think that we are going to be look like the absolute laughing stock of the league if we exit in stock. the first round after we'll all the shit that stock. we've done. Yeah. Stuff. Sorry, guys. Sorry for the kids. Sorry for cussing. <laughs> no. Uh, hell no, this doesn't light a fire into them to turn it around in the playoffs. You know why? Because obviously losing three straight to shitty teams didn't light a fire in them to go beat the Knicks tonight. Chris, we don't have a we don't have a dump button, man. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, But yeah, that's that's just I I can't get on board with that yet. Or I like maybe if they do finish strong, like you said, JT, maybe I will do a 180. But that's just I just don't trust them right now. Yeah, I, I think I speak for a lot of fans who just don't trust this Bucks team. And so, no, there's no way this in any any way lights a fire into this Bucks team to just all of a sudden turn it on and win consecutive games in a in a seven seven game series and uh, eventually just skate to the to the Eastern Conference. No, it's not going to happen. So, no. And I ain't, ain't, there's not going to be any skating, skating no. anywhere. Um, <laughs> And even talk about, you know, running some games out. There's, what, five games left? With eight, eight. There's not a lot of, like, we're just going to win down the stretch. There's, the time is running. It's, it's, it's running out. And I think when we talk about winning, now, again, the end of the season, sure. But I, I think the real win is going to have to be you're going to have to come out and prove something. In the first. You're going you're gonna to have to – like because the way you're playing right now, you're limping into the playoffs. And the, nobody – I don't know that it even matters who the opponent is. Nobody – I would not be surprised if there are a lot of people. I think the Bucks in Vegas will be the favorites no matter who they play. But there are going to be a lot of people. We talked about this before. There are going to be a lot of people who think, nah, nah. They got Miami? Nah. They got Philly and NBs? Nah. I think that's going to be a lot. I think that a lot of people are going to think that. But if you go out and you beat a Miami, maybe that will – I, I, I don't know because that would mean that you have won some game. Like, again, to win a series – you will have to win at least four out of your last out of seven games. Mm-hmm. So you will have some type of winning going on if that happens. And I, I that is where I can get with it. If you can win a first round series, because again, the, the opponent doesn't matter. Indiana, Miami, or Philly, um, or hell, again, the Knicks are in play, the, uh, and 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 probably the Cavs and, and Orlando. Like at this point, everybody's in play because the Bucs have not separated themselves to take that two seed. But if you can get a win against any of those teams in a series. I do think that gives you the momentum to carry into round two. 
because you haven't been winning prior. So I, I don't know. Um, let's keep going. Let's uh, what, go ahead, JT. No, you're you're, you're, you're good. Okay. You're good. Uh, let's keep going on on the Twitter at Moonman six seven nine says I think we dropped to the five seed after the regular season is over. At Jay Horvath says for the first time in the last ten years of watching the Bucks, I am profoundly sad. This team has to be blown up. Screw the playoffs. I can't wait for the summer. Uh, it has to include um, Horse, Dot, Dame, Chris, Brooke, Pat. Start the F over. Mm. Um, at Bucks and Sixes, Pat has the Milwaukee Bucks organization blackmailed. It's the only explanation. Do a couple more here. Uh, at King James, XXLV says, we need to start booing these MFs, man. That's what I said. I'm, I'm with you. And then uh, we'll do one more here. Um, at Martinez Coleman Jr. says, does Brooke even like playing for Doc? Because he seems to be rebellious lately. I wonder if it's because Doc throws them under the bus in his interviews. Actually, I'll do one more and say, uh, let's do this one. At Sunk345 says, I have a theory that certain players – I don't like this one. I have a theory that certain players and coaches on the Bucks are gambling behind the scenes oh, and betting boy. in FanDuel. No, no other way to explain such anemic no. offensive performances <laughs> with such a talented team. They are not worried about winning. They are worried about their parlays. <laughs> that is uh, that is an uh, you know extreme conclusion. <laughs> extreme conclusion about what we've been seeing. But, hey. Oh, man. It's become a um, show is a part of it. Hey. <laughs> Right, you never. Luckily, know. luckily, it's not. Luckily, you can't do it in Wisconsin. So if they on FanDuel or or, or DraftKings, they have to drive to the border of Illinois to go ahead and get the bets in. If they, if they, well, they or, have or, no or you you got your interpreter and you get to you get your whoever your yeah. handler yeah. is to go take that. Hire, trip. hire, hire an interpreter. Get they, access they, to your bank. They also, account. they also have no problem going over to Chicago at the barstool office. So you know, right, what yeah. I mean? so, you know, know what's happening? Really got going on. <laughs> Um, man, let's, let's talk about, so next thing we have here is the playoff picture. We kind of started off, we kind of started talking about the playoffs, but let's, let's keep rolling with the playoff picture here. Um, and right now, let's see if I, if it's updated on the NBA app. Um, it has updated the Bucks are 47 and 31. Wow. Can you believe, can you believe, can you believe that the Milwaukee Bucks were winning at a 70% clip? And now here we are at the end of the season, and they have won 60% of the games. Wow, that is a 10% turnaround, uh, a, a drop of 10% uh, from winning. So, again, it, like I said, I guess I, I, it, it was like the Trump thing. Like, I, I never knew that, that Trump would be correct, that the, the organization got tired of winning. It was too much winning. It was too much. It's too much for them. They had to fire the coach. Um, 47-31, they had they are 15 games back. So, again, yeah, from, from Boston, they're catching Boston. They lost 4-0, 3-7 in the last 10. The only other team is three and seven in the last ten in the top six uh, in the East is Cleveland, who is also three and seven in their last ten. The Bucks are one game ahead of Orlando and one game ahead of New York. Now we talked about this. If the Bucks had won tonight, they would be two games up on the Knicks because that would have been a full game. They'd been two games up on the Knicks and two and a half games up on Cleveland. That would have probably put that would have with only five games to go. Five games left, right? Is it five left? With only five games to go, two and a half up is pretty hard to again when you're not losing every game. It it's not insurmountable, but but you 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 have a really good cushion there. And with five games to go, if you're up two and a half, when you're only up one on the four seed, and there are five games left, a lot can happen. As a matter of fact, and and just being honest, the six seed is not even. They are two and a, they are only two and a half games up on Indiana. In this for the sixth seed, so the Bucks could, in theory, drop all the way to six with five games to go. Now we hope that does not happen, but that could happen. I don't see again. You're, you're three and a half games up on Philly. Philly has won five in a row. So, mm. but so in in, in in so in theory, you could drop to seven. I don't see that happening. You got to. I think if you win, your match number there is probably one. If you win one game, you probably are can avoid the seven seed and the play in. But. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, where do the I mean, the schedule coming up for the Milwaukee Bucks, it is tough. The schedule coming up for the Milwaukee Bucks is tough. So it's it's Tuesday night against Boston, right? And then who's your who's your next one after that? Magic. You got Orlando. Then you got the Thunder. Then you're finishing up with the Magic. So we got four games left at this point. And the Magic and the Magic are right now one game behind you, the threes. So the Magic are are they they are going to be gunning for these games. Yep. They are one hundred percent going to be gunning for these games. And again, 
I think two, three, I don't think is a consequence. I don't think it matters two, three. You do not, I promise you don't want to be in that four seed. No. Because that, that four seed gets you in a, in a, you, what, what, what Tay Long say? You're going one on one with the Undertaker. I know it's WrestleMania. He said you're going one on one with the Undertaker. And you don't want to go one on one with the Boston Celtics in the second round. You want to no. say that to the, to the conference finals. Um, so, man, I, I, wait, let me ask, let's just ask this. Where does this thing end up? Where the, you said, so you said, oh, it's, I don't, I don't have it in front of me. I, I, I'm having trouble pulling it up. So it's, okay. it's, bo- go ahead. It's, go ahead. Boston, Boston, Magic, Bucks, or Boston, Magic, Thunder, Magic. Oh, it's only four games left. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's only four games left. There's only four games left. Okay. So you probably, okay. So you won't get the six. So you should be good on this. So you should, so you probably gonna get dropped down to five. Um, you got you 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 got it you, okay you got it you you have to at least split one of those one of those uh you got to split one of those Orlando games and you you got to beat either Boston or Oklahoma City but you have to split at the very least you got to split the Orlando games man that's tough where did, oh, so where where did the bucks end, where so where did the bucks end up give me give me the okay four games left give me the buck give me the bucks record give me the bucks record okay Go ahead, JT. You got it. I got to think about it. I mean, I think best case scenario, 49 and 33. Hmm. So that means you went two. I think best case scenario, 49 and 33. And, and, and for, okay, so and for the record, so Todd just, so the, yeah, because that made sense now. So the Bucks did clinch not being in the play in, which it seems that tough that they would have to clinch that down. But yeah, that, so the Bucks are not going to be in the play in. And yeah, so it's, Okay, so okay, so you're saying you say they win two of those, JT. I think I think the best case scenario is the Bucks win two out of our next four. And where does that? Where do you think that lands? Do you think that lands? In, does that keep the two seed or is that? Absolutely. You, uh, I, I need to, you got you to look at Orlando because I, I think it also depends on what teams you beat because, you know, you can avoid Orlando. I, I, I guess you have to look at Orlando and New York and Cleveland schedules as well. See, Orlando gets the Rockets, and they're and they're already done. The Rockets are cooked. The, Rock, the Rockets play play very hard. They had a very tough game against. The, at the, get, the difference with the Rockets here's the Rockets are good. They played very well. They played very well. They they gave the Warriors a run for their money um, to get into the play in game. And tonight they took they took Dallas to the wire. It took like I think Kyrie did Kyrie have fifty tonight. It took almost a 50, 50 ball from Kyrie. Yeah, um, but if they've been eliminated at this point, are they going to give a damn? Well, they've been eliminated before. They were eliminated tonight, and they and they play very. I think they do because again, they're a young, scrappy team, and those young teams still take these games as building blocks and to go into next. So again, they were they were eliminated tonight, and and they gave they gave a damn tonight and almost and almost beat the uh, Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, so uh, I hate being optimistic here, but. Yeah. I absolutely hate it, and it pains me to do it, but I think they go 3-1 and one in these last four, and they lock up the two. Uh, and here's why. I think the only team that you maybe lose to is Oklahoma City because they're going to have some some get back, get it, get it back in blood after you held them to under 100 points. But realistically, yeah, you lost to the Magic earlier in the season. I think you, I think you sweep them. Uh, I just don't think they're serious enough. I, 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 don't, I don't think they have the talent out there, and, and maybe that doesn't matter because we've seen this Bucks team lose to, to three terrible teams, but I just – I, th- I think at some point this team has to get uh, a couple wins, and I think that they just overpower the Magic. And then I would say they beat the Celtics. Um, just because I know they'll get up for that game, I, 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 I know they will. I, I don't think that – especially if, if Celtics sit, guys, and I think the Bucks will win that one. So I'm, as much as it pains me to do it, I'm going to go 3-1 and one and lock up the two. So, so if I, so I'm just looking at, at the Knicks schedule here. And, but they've the, got to lose, right? <laughs> the, Knicks, the Knicks play the Bulls. Mm-hmm. The Celtics, the Nets, and the Bulls. Bulls stink. The Nets stink. Um, and Boston is. I don't know what they're gonna do. The 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 Knicks could. I mean, I, if I'm looking at that, I, I think the Knicks could realistically go three and one. Realistically, they they could go three and one during that stretch. The Magic have Rockets, Bucks, Sixers, Bucks. I think the Magic probably. I, I think they split. So I think the. I think the Magic probably go two and two, and so that probably means that if you're the Milwaukee Bucks, if you can go two and two during that stretch, I think that means you lock up the two seed with the two and with going two and twos. But but again, you have to win. You have to win those games. You've got to win those games. Um, and I don't think you can. I, I know there's this talk about rest. I don't think you you can't rest because again. 
you cannot find yourself in that four seed. Like I, I don't, I don't think anybody wants to be there. I again, I don't, I don't buy this thing that like the Bucks are resting and or the Bucks are trying to avoid it. I don't buy any of it at all. The Bucks are just not playing well, and I, I think you have to go two and two. But if you want to instill some, some real confidence, I don't know what kind of line of boss is going to roll out there. But you have to, get, you, you got to go out there and beat. You, you really should go. You really need to beat Orlando twice. Uh, you can get away with a split if you beat. Um, like I said, one of um, you can get away with a split, but, but yeah, you can get away with a split if you beat one of Orlando, excuse me, one of Boston and Oklahoma City, then you can get away with a split. But but you could just go out and just beat Orlando twice. I mean, you, you really should. That's you really should go it. three and one in this you sport. You should do that. Yeah, you should. And that's why I said two and oh, because I, I really think that they're I think they got their win against us this season. I think the I think the Bucks will show up for that one. Um, Ashwin Vincat says, if you have to trick the team into playing serious, not a real contender. Um, mm. yeah. <laughs> what, what were you about to say, JT? I thought you, yeah, no, no, I was just going to say that, but like, based off what we've seen over the last 10 days, is there anything that makes us think that this team, but outside of player careers, reputation, having quote unquote, the stronger squad on paper, is there anything that, that, that we see right now that tells you, oh yeah, this team's going to come out fire and go three and one. They're going to oh. come out and they, oh. and they, and they more likely than not are going to lock up that two seat. Right. No, Cause right not, now I feel like, right. They're, they're not, but you think uh, there's nobody on the magic that can give you what Jalen Brunson just did to us today. <laughs> there's so nobody like on the Wizards. Hang on, Chris. There's nobody on the Wizards that's, that can give us what Jalen Brunson. But I just there think was nobody on the Grizzlies. I just think there was we, nobody on the Raptors. Well, I just think true. I just think matchup wise, we're just a whole lot better on paper, um, and, and sizing up, you know, guy for guy, um, just to oh. yeah, fall. <laughs> uh, I just I just think that we're we're so. Uh, we're, we're just a lot better than than the Magic at roster constructed wise. So I just, yeah, I, I I still have. I mean, I think the Magic will be good in a couple of years, but I just think this year it's like and they, it's a weak East. Uh, Jeremy Tobias makes a good point here. Says this team is um, and Cole the Bulls says we have the tiebreaker with the Knicks. Do do we really? Because we I, lost. I didn't know that. I don't because we lost on Christmas, so maybe we're two and two against New York because we lost against the Knicks on Christmas. I know again, and so if you want, if, hey, okay, well, if if y'all, if we do, if that's true, somebody let me know if that's actually true. If the Bucks do have the tiebreak against the Knicks, you know, you had to thank for that. You only tell you who got to thank for having the tiebreak against the Knicks is probably that man, Doctor Griffin. Oh, <laughs> so thankful for because he probably beat the Knicks early in the season. But I know they lost on Christmas. Um, and and so there is a um, so we'll we'll, we'll see. Kind of, we I, I don't I don't know I don't know tiebreakers. Yeah, huh? we, we won in the play-in, right? So ah uh, yes, we did beat them going in the, in one of us playing. Um, yeah, we absolutely did. Um, but Jeremy Tobias makes a good point here and says this team reminds me of the Eagles. They they're done and will get smashed for. Oh, they're not get smashed for. Oh, but but that's it, that's not the first time I've had. I had a I, I had a, a, a buddy send me a text and tell me that the Milwaukee and it sent me this. I'm talking like a month ago and said that the Bucks reminded him of the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm. And you saw, I mean, the Eagles last year, very, you know, very, I'm talking about the year before last year, very, very good. Of course, go out, you know, they, they give themselves a chance to, to win it all. And then they come back this last, this last season, and it was just a little, it was disappointing. And you could kind of see it as the regular season ticked on. You could kind of see where it was going to head for Philly, uh, and, and, it, and it ended prematurely for them. Do you, do you kind of make any parallels, draw any comparisons to the Eagles with the Milwaukee Bucks? I can see it. I can definitely, I can definitely see it. The difference, though, is I think I don't think it was palpable that the Eagles checked out. At this point, it looks like this team has just checked out, right? Like so, I, I think that there's there's probably a difference there. But I do like that analogy of comparing it to the Eagles, and the Eagles are such a strong team, and you really had strength everywhere. I think at this point, though, our deficiencies are bad. What we were doing good, we're now doing bad. Our leader is questionable. The team, the motivation, the effort, all of that stuff is is up in the air at this point. So. Uh, I don't even, I don't even, uh, right now you can't call us the Eagles because of that. Cause I don't think that was ever in question with the Eagles. Yeah. At least they, at least they made the Super Bowl last year. <laughs> we were first round exit. So, uh, you, I don't know. I was talking about the Eagles this year. Y'all talking about the Eagles this year, right? No, but, the, but he was saying, he was saying like they, you know, they fell off after their one chance. Um, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I just think obviously it's two different games. And so, you know, you have one game and it can end your one bad game and end your whole season. That's that's the fortunate part about having seven game series. You can you can have a bad game and then uh, and, and still end up winning the series. So uh, not too much for me, but you know I'm still I'm still 
panic right now for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. You, you you have to be feeling um, that way if you're a Milwaukee Bucks fan. But before we go to game balls, I do want to ask you guys um, about Chris Milton. Um, of course, you know again it's a it's a freak accident. Um, and so I, I had some comments about you know, the comment I had when it took place and, and Chris was going to be out. Um, the comment I had was, you know, it does not seem likely that this big three is going to get through an entire playoff run mm. fully healthy. And I asked people push back me against that because they were like, well, it's a freak, it's a freak accident. Why don't you act like you tore his ACL? Da, da, da. And okay, my, my point is, I, I, I'm not saying I'm just I'm not saying that he's going to be lost for the season. I'm saying I could easily see some. It's all it's always something. Whether it's Chris, Dane, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I have another birthday party. Or I don't know. Like I, it's always something that that seems to happen that flares up with this team. And again, you can't go. It was a freak accident. It was a freak accident that he land that he landed on Katie's foot. That was a free. That wasn't like a, a pulled hammy or something. That was a freak accident. Kevin Durant's foot got up under him. He's gone for a month. Knocked in the face, loses to a freak. That's a free. It's a freak accident. But at some point, it, it's just something. It, what, what's what's the uh, what's the man? Is it who, whose law is it that everything everything bad will always be bad? What, what's the what's is that the Murphy's law? Murphy's law? Murphy's, Murphy's law. law. Yeah, like everything bad, something some bad's gonna happen, and it just continues to happen. And and, and I don't know. Do you? Is, am I out of line by saying that it seems like it's going that, that it does not seem like this? Because again, this is gonna be one of the first times Big Three's back all together before Doc. Here we go. Gone. It didn't last two quarters. Didn't last a half. It feels that way. I think it feels that way. It just feels like we just can't we just can't catch a break. I feel bad for Chris because this is you know none of this is his fault. These are just things that happen, and this is untimely, especially right as he was his playing well. I mean, he loses a tooth, and I don't know. Do you get a special mouth mouth guard or something if you do that? I'm not. I'm not really sure. Again, this isn't hockey. Right? Hockey weird. guys lose guys lose teeth in hockey all the time. They come back in, which is wild. But it's a different it's a different culture, right? These are. Uh, I don't know, um, but I do. I do. Agree with you though. This may be a Murphy's Law type situation, one hundred percent. And honestly, I think Doc brings some of that energy. I really don't even want to put this in the air, but it seems to me like this could be another Brooklyn Nets situation, and that would suck. And you saw what happened with them. Obviously, we reap the benefits of that uh, with Kyrie getting hurt, and you know, it's just Chris just is just injury prone for sure. I don't care if it's a freak injury. Um, you know, like the like this is what happened to, to Kyrie. He he was injury prone and then look what happened, a freak injury. Giannis just happens to uh he just happens to land on Giannis, I'll say. And he's out the rest of the playoffs. So, you know, I, I hope it's not that and I really hope it doesn't have to blow up like how they blew up. Um, but that's what it's kind of seeming like to me, and I would not be surprised if they're not able to finish the playoffs with all three uh, of the big three in the lineup. Oh, they lose. It's absolutely blowing up. Um, and and but only here's, here's the only difference. You said it's like Brooklyn. Here's the difference. You're in, in my opinion, you're not going to be able to say, oh well, this guy got hurt. Oh, well, we would have won, but no. And again, Brooklyn can do that because they they weren't together long. I can't go that route. When every year since 2021, you found you found a way to be injured. 2022 is Chris Milton out. 2023, well, Giannis had a bad bet. I, I, I don't do excuses. I don't, I don't, I call it the Nets, the if champions. I don't do excuses, man. Like, so if if you're telling me that you didn't know that somebody else is going to be hurt, that's on you because you brought you brought on them old fools back. You didn't want you get somebody younger than if you want, if you if you were afraid of injury. So I'm I'm not I I just can't do the injury excuses here. If it's somebody if Chris Milton again, I said this before too, and this is the first time I said it. If Chris Milton's hurt this year and he misses any time at all in the playoffs, I'm talking about if he misses if he misses five minutes of a game because he needs to go get his uh, uh, he got to go get his ankles retaped and the Bucks don't win, he's got to go. You need to have a full postseason, 100 percent healthy Chris Milton. That that I I I don't want to hear any other way. Um, but again, that's me. Okay. Um, um somebody said uh, the. Uh, the po- these uh, Josh Davis says these shows don't hit the same after the losses. Shaking my head, depressing. Yeah, it was depressing. It's it is it's depressing, and it should be. It should be. Um, and the last one I saw, Ed Ed Dugar says, uh, I really believe there's an internal issue. I think that Giannis and Lillard are not on the same page. This is ever since Lillard to five. I don't know what that means. Lillard, Lillard to five. Oh, the little it's starting the starting five lineup. Um, well, Ed, I, again, I you know I like I like to drop some gems in here every now and then. Uh, with some with some things that I do know, and I will tell you that. And again, I don't know. I'll say this: 
I don't know what their relationship is like today. I can tell you that they did have some issues in the past um, when this thing first started, getting this thing in line, that Damian Lillard has some issues with Giannis. But again, I don't know what that issue or what that – they may have patched those up. They may be hey, they may be best buddies, right? I have no idea. I can tell you that, that early in the season, that is absolutely true. Damian Lillard and Giannis were not – I would say we're not getting along – uh, they didn't have the best of relationship. CB, yeah, Christian, hashtag sources. Yeah, you know, uh, we do the source. Um, Man, I wish we could tell them our source, but we can't do that. Yeah. We can't, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't get y'all our, our It's reliable. Our we really can't. Yep. No, it's very reliable. reliable. Yeah, yes. we just. But yeah. Um, that's... But yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's so yeah. That that that's what I know on that. Let's do. Uh, y'all want to do? Y'all want to do game balls? You doing game balls? Yeah, it'd be quick. Yeah. Okay. Who who you guys going game ball? I, I honestly, I'd rather just close my eyes and punt it up in the air as high as possible. We'll play 500. Whoever comes away with it takes it. I mean, I don't see how you don't give your game ball to to, to Brunson tonight. I mean, the way he was, and you know, you know, I don't do that. No, 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 no. I, I said I would rather punt my game ball up in the air and see who catches it. I don't see how you don't give your game ball to Brunson. I'm not giving mine to nobody tonight because I refuse to give mine to the opposing team. Well, with that being said. I'm going to go with Jalen Brunson. I mean, oh, this no, is what just a surprise. A, well, yeah, I mean, this is just – I just watched him absolutely cook the Bucks, and he's been doing it all season. And they just didn't have an answer. I mean, this kid was – and shout-out to the Knicks for recognizing how much of a talent he was because he was kind of hiding in the shadows a little bit uh, in oh. Dallas. And then he, he goes there, and he's able to just unleash. And it's it's cool. He's oh. actually carved out roles for, for players like that in, in college as well. Like, we saw Mark Sears from Alabama. They – they play exactly alike, and um, and yeah, it it just shows that you know a smaller guard, lefty who can, you know, a little undersized can can stay in the NBA and play in the NBA. So uh, yeah, it's cool. Uh, good good game from him. It was it was actually kind of fun to watch. I mean, because I had no expectation to win. <laughs> so yeah, he was hooping. Uh, he absolutely was hooping. Um... I'm gonna go Brunson too. I mean, I, I don't think there's any. I, I don't think I, I. I can't give it anybody else. Forty three, six and eight. I mean, he was sixteen to thirty two from the field. I mean, so he took a bunch of shots, made half of them, two or six from three. Uh, he 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 cooked the Bucks. He was the best player. He was the best player on the floor tonight. He embarrassed the Milwaukee Bucks in five star form. And again, it, it, it was fun. the funny thing to me is Doc Rivers made the statement. It's like just, just shut up, just shut, shut up, and just kind of just say, hey, we got to get better. I got to do better. Because he makes it, we're, we're unserious on the road. Well, now what you going to say? Because now you look unserious at home, too. You look unserious on the road. Now you, now you look unserious at home. So what's the, that's what I'm telling you, this, this coach speak, and I'm, oh, I'm just going to say this. And, yeah, our problems on the road. No, they're not. Now you got problems at home. Who, who, did you take, did you take it? Well, I've been taking notes. So why, take some notes at home, then. What'd you you going to take some notes about the home preparation, too? Now you take, you took notes on what happened at this, man. Doc is, is, is getting, he gets on my nerves, man. Um, yeah, I, so let, let me ask this question, right? Like, how old was Doc? Sixty three. Who's Doc? Man. Is the game has the game left Doc at this point? And, and and what I mean is, it's not about basketball knowledge, but part of the NBA, some of some of coaching in the NBA is X's and O's, but a lot of it is more player management, right? A lot of it is more getting the best out of guys, and I think managing relation. I, I just I has the game has the game left Doc. Is he just too old, too out of touch? Can he not connect with the younger guys? Is he too stuck in his ways? I, I, I mean, I imagine he's seen a lot since he's been coaching. When he started coaching in the early 2000s, didn't he start with Orlando? Is that right? Yeah, he's with Orlando, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just – I don't know. I'm just not sure that Doc is just connected enough or that he's not too far removed from coaching guys who are all, you know, 30-plus years younger than him. Yeah, I mean – I don't have much to say about Doc. I just, you guys know, or pretty much the chat knows how we feel about him off rip and uh, about some of the, the decisions you made after hiring a coach winning a 70% clip. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't even know. I don't know. Is he out of touch? I don't know. Probably. I mean, he was ESPN at the beginning of this year. But You got a really good question in the chat. I'm going to screenshot it to you to see if you want to answer it. I, I, I was going to get to it. I, I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, I will say that um, the our our – 973 guy, uh, Andrew from 973 texted me, said uh, ultimately Doc Rivers came out, uh, took full responsibility for the law, said it's okay for he and his, for he and, said it's okay he and his staff need to figure it out. So he took full responsibility tonight. Um, I'm assuming, John, that you're talking about this, uh, this, this, um, the chat was from, um, somebody asking about whether 
whether we could confirm that Dame was the one that got Adrian Griffin. I mean, they got uh, Adrian Griffin fired. You talking about that one? Mm-hmm. Karan, Jamar, Kenner, yes, sir. Yeah, I don't see, yes, sir. So, yeah, so I will say, and this is how, again, this is how you know, because I, I, since people say I hate Dane, I would love to say, oh, it was Dane. It was not. It was Giannis. Giannis, Giannis was the one who was responsible for Adrian Griffin being hired. He was also responsible for Adrian Griffin ultimately being fired. Now, what I won't disclose is who kind of was anchoring some of those scenarios too. Um, I will just say those people are well. Obviously, those people are still in the building. Um, but there's people who, who there are some people who were in Giannis's ear who probably should not have been that were really um, drive. So I think Giannis vocalized it. There were some people who I'm mean, you know like charged the battery, put the charger in his back, who really got him. You know, wh- which is why he's up. Hey, let me get on the whiteboard. That because I mean that was already everybody's already know that was reported. That was you know let me get on the whiteboard. Da 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 and. Huh? Like, do we, you know, come on, dog. So there are people who, who were pushing that, that to him. Um, and that's where, that's how that, uh, that's how that went. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, but that's, that is what it is. And, you know, I'll, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to ask a follow-up take, question take, about, take about Bud. I'm just going to let it go. I'm not asking this follow-up okay. question about like Bud. Said, I'm going to let it go. Well, like I said, we'll, we'll keep, like I said, I, 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 I dropped some nuggets here and there and, you know, like I said, I protect people's confidentiality and all that. But yeah, we We'll drop some nuggets here and there about things that, that you know that we know from going on from in, inside the building, um, just a little bit. Um, man, like I said, man, appreciate it. Everybody listening and watching uh, tonight, man. Follow and like, subscribe, uh, like everything. Get get your likes in and your follows and, and subscribe uh, to the to the show to the Crimson Crossover. We really appreciate it. Um, T Money says Knicks got key help for Brunson from a number of players. Yeah, they they did tonight. I mean, but it's, it, this is what I say. It seems like the Knicks know their roles that's all it seems like because brunson basically like just runs the show and that's why i say like to me to me it doesn't i, I don't know like the knicks they, they are very i mentioned this they are a very one-dimensional basketball team where it's like brunson's doing everything and if you could even just slow down brunson slightly i would dare dante to keep making those threes i would dare hartenstein to keep hitting that floater all night long i would like i want to dare those guys to do that versus you know what we saw tonight where you that's you got to take something away and and that's your issue is that doc rivers the game plan took nothing away you got to take something like i'm like 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 almost like what the memphis grizzlies did to the bucks where it was we're going to take Giannis away somebody else got in the bucks shot what like 20 percent three or whatever like i'm going to make your guys hit shot you got to make somebody do something to you um and the bucks they, they got cooked all all the way around sauteed if you will um okay let's take a let's ta- let's let's do our let's do a look around another long show i hate i wish we'd get out of here early i, I can't because guys have been so so bad um whoo clippers beat the cavaliers which is a big help to the milwaukee bucks but the bucks couldn't help themselves um 120 118 the mavericks had an overtime thriller to beat the rockets uh the pacers beat the miami heat tonight 117 115 Pelicans beat the Suns, Raptors beat the Wizards, Magic beat the Bulls. Um, of course, my stuff just went out right there. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, da, da, da. Okay, Thunder beat the Hornets, Celtics keep rolling, 76ers rolling, beating the Spurs, the Kings blow out the Nets, and the Warriors beat the Jazz, and it's still going, only game still going on right now, NBA TV, is the uh, Timberwolves and the Lakers there in the second quarter. Uh, it's 52 to 50. Uh, we talked a little bit already about what happened in the um, – well, we'll talk about the playoff picture. I do want to get some some early, some quick thoughts on uh, – I do want to get some, some of your quick thoughts on um, on uh, the, uh, the women's college football – women's <laughs> college basketball uh, championship, uh, Iowa-South Carolina. Um, what, what did you guys think? I mean, I, I watched that game. I, I'll be brief because I want to get out of here. Um, but I thought Caitlin Clark, you know, she she had to do too much mm-hmm. to, um, you know, our, our teammates just suck. Our teammates were they weren't they weren't good <laughs> enough. Like I said, you, you know, you're on the national stage. I you know I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. You know, I, I you know, hey, I, I appreciate what y'all you know y'all are out there, but they weren't good. They weren't good. South Carolina was the better team, and Caitlin Clark would have had to pull off a miracle to win that game. And you know, she came fairly close, but uh, but again, South Carolina was a better team. And shout out to the South Carolina Gamecocks and and uh, and uh, Don Don Staley, mm-hmm. Don Don Staley, 
um, for it was a 38 and 0 and undefeated um, season. I think it was like one of the only like 10 undefeated seasons in basketball history, uh, college basketball history. So again, shout out to her. Shout out to um, shout out to South Carolina getting the dub and and they get their get back, get licked back uh, against Iowa. So again, that was a, it was a fun game. I thought it was a great moment for college women's sports, all of that, and uh, again, capped off a, a really fun season. You know, the, the thing tonight about that game is Caitlin Clark came out firing in that first quarter, had 18 points. She finished the game with 30. Um, but shout out to, to Don Staley for putting Raven – was it Raven Johnson on her, making that adjustment. And yeah. Caitlin Clark was like 10 for 28 tonight. It was it was literally hero hero ball, Bel Air Academy, whatever it is you can do just, to, just to, to, to get her to jack up shots. And she finished with 30 points tonight. But I agree with you, Trey. I don't want to call her team a bunch of bombs. But I will say that, listen, playing with sometimes playing with bums or playing with people around you that are not very good, very good for your personal brand. And we have seen that, right, with Giannis. We've seen that with Dane. We've seen that with numerous different players. Sometimes playing with you know players around you who were, you are head and shoulders above is good for your personal brand. Uh, I, I think it's remarkable that Iowa even made it to this point because it is clear that from a team, they were nowhere near as talented as LSU, nor were they anywhere near as talented as South Carolina. And – yeah, you know, Camilla came out, and what Camilla, I think she went like 15 and 15 or 16 and 15. Camilla came out, took the belt to ass. Um, uh, the other girl, uh, Tessa Johnson, I think that's her name, she came out, made some big plays. The freshman, I mean, yeah, but I, I agree with you, and I will throw this out here. What Kaylin Clark has done is she's elevated the women's game. What some of these WNBA stars, Diana Tarazi, Sue Bird, the, the, you know, she, Sue Bird's retired now. These old, bitter, washed up clowns that nobody gave a damn about. Oh wow. Yeah, bro, they're talking wow. so much trash about Caitlin Clark and it's and it's disgusting. And they should be embarrassed. They should absolutely be embarrassed. Because you know why? Because she's lifting up the sport in ways that you guys could not. And I get that they are Hall of Famers. Oh, you know, they're some of the best basketball players. That's great. Y'all sound like a bunch of old bitter haters right now. Cause y'all had to go play in one of the one of the Akias in Eastern Europe, right? If it, right, one of those one of those one of those one of those countries with you know missiles in public parks. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like, yes. That's the problem that I have with it, man. And the hate and the energy that she's catching with them is absolutely ridiculous. Why are they jealous? Why are they mad? She's doing what y'all couldn't do for the sport. So they need to go ahead and get that girl her flowers. If Caitlin Clark single-handedly has elevated this game of college basketball, and they had some of their best ratings. ESPN had some of his best ratings for basketball, period, in the last 20 years. And they had their highest this, – this, this game tonight is the highest uh, – they had like the highest number of bets in sports books. For women, for any of uh, all of women's sports in history. I mean, man, get that girl her props. Caitlin Clark, man, she deserves it. Yeah, and it's not like she's making, you know, those those people say it by any of her comments. Like she's just she's very well media trained. She's not talking mess about any WNBA player. I think they just I think the media has propped her up so much that they just feel the need to weigh in on what mm -hmm. they think about Caitlin Clark, which they don't need to. But anyway, um, yeah, I think it's good for the women's game, regardless of who won this game, right? Because you would have had Caitlin Clark winning it and then cementing her legacy as like one of the actual like goats, probably the goat. And, you know, South Carolina had to get it back in blood. They were disappointing last season. Um, and they come out and they get it, get their revenge. And so uh, it's good for Don Staley. She's a tremendous coach. And, yeah, just happy to see them win because um, you really couldn't go wrong with whoever won this game. It was just great for women's sports. Um, and then, shoot, Monday, tomorrow, right? It's men's UConn, Purdue. I like UConn. Go ahead, Trey. Yeah, I like UConn. They're a different breed, different mm -hmm. animal. Role players um, are way I, better. I, I, yeah, I think I think UConn is is, is going to take this. I don't know that. I mean, I, I don't want to say it won't be close, but you know, I, I think that uh, UConn comfortably beats Purdue um, and, and stops the Zach Eady train. And again, I don't, I, you know, I don't have any thoughts on Zach Eady. I just don't want him in Milwaukee. That's it. Yeah, you know, I think it'll be a competitive game. I think this is the first time UConn will have faced a one seed. I mean, UConn's last eleven. The UConn really has taken the belt to ass to the, to everybody they've played in the tournament. It took them a while against Alabama, but once they pulled that thing out, they kept going. Mm -hmm. And um, man, I just I it, it feels to me like Purdue will compete and they'll come out and they'll try. Purdue's one of the best three point shooting teams in the country, so they're one hundred percent going to need lawyer and. You know the other the other guy, right? They look like Hoosiers Raven out Smith there, but the Royer and, and Raven Smith and those guys get the threes going because you know Zach Eady, I think, is going to do his thing down low. Even though UConn has a big man that yeah, is Clinton. that is very underrated, if he can, he can flat out ball too. I think they're going to win. Clinging, Donovan Clinging. Yeah, yes, sir. 
Yeah. I mean, I think he, he's about as good as it gets to, to com- combat Zach Eady in college in the college game right now. Like, we saw DJ Burns. He just wasn't tall enough. He just wasn't big enough for, for Zach Eady. And I think Donovan McClingan is probably the best you get uh, matchup-wise in, in all of college basketball because he's strong, he's filled out, and he's seven foot one, seven two, whatever it is. So it won't be much of a height difference as much as it was DJ Burns. Um... We got some some comments in here. Uh, King of King says those girls that put women's college basketball, they wasn't getting paid. That's why they are mad. And exactly, they they mad because they had to ride the bus and they was flying Spirit Airlines and everything else, and and they was hating life. And they and they mad because because the road they paved, somebody taking advantage of, and they and they feelings because they don't want to be erased from people's memories. Mm-hmm. And because uh, let me ask you a question, Phil. Let me ask people in the chat. How many of y'all said, "Oh my God, Diana Taurasi is playing basketball in the WNBA tonight"? I got to turn that on. Now she was a monster in college too, and she's been good. But y'all get y'all y'all we, y'all really playing right now. If you think for two seconds that any of those folks inspired you guys to stop what you had to do on a Sunday afternoon or, or whatever night of the week to watch their game, it just it just didn't happen. Uh, T Money says Clark couldn't hold a candle. To any of those ladies, when it comes to talent, that's the only reason ratings and betting was on fire. Please stop talking like Clark is close to even well, being. No, no, she one hundred percent is a goat in college. Men. Men. All time she's like men's men. and women's. Like there's, right. it's undoubtedly like. And she and it's not like she took an extra year to get that. She still played what four years. So I I would. Well, let me ask: Is she she the goat though? Are you saying she's the goat? No, I don't think so. In 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 college basketball, in women's college basketball, the goat. It's hard because you have people like Cheryl Miller. You have these legends, Brianna Stewart, who won Mm -hmm. like four straight national titles, and so you make that the debate. But she is absolutely one of. There's no question. Yes, yeah, I think absolutely no question about one of. Yeah, one of. Yeah, one of, one, of, one, one of, yeah, I, I would have elevated her to the top if she won a championship. Like, you just can't brush by the fact that she's leading all time men's and women's. I don't care if there wasn't a three point line. Like, come on now, she puts up 30 and averages 10 assists again. Like, that's and, and, that's and ridiculous fact, numbers. Like, you can't, and the fact that she's able to will that team to the championship, come on, she's a winner. And the fact that's what I'm saying, like, like she got she got like physical therapists and and teachers and, you know, investment bankers as teammates. Like, what are we, what are we doing here? And, and to make it to that level, that Carol, that South Carolina team probably has numerous different WNBA players on that team. Uh, right. The only other woman person that may have a chance is what's the girl Haley, the, 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 um, the center. Or the forward, Haley, I, I can't pronounce her last night. Yeah, she might have a, a chance to make it. But everybody else, come on, man. Gabby Marshall, uh, Gabby Marshall going to be a, 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 a bar right. stool maybe, right? Like she yeah, might be right. on a bar stool or something or might be, you know. Yeah, he's right. Just saying. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, and then T, T, T Money says she's not even top 10, so I don't believe that. Um, but, again, uh, yeah, man, so the Bucks lose it tonight. They uh unable – to get off the schneid, they stay on a losing streak. I don't know, man. I'm I'm just as perplexed as everybody else. Any any final thoughts here on the Bucks? A 102 to oh, excuse me, a 122 109 loss. Another loss to the New York Knicks. You know, I wish the I wish the Bucks would just refund all the fans for their for their money and or time had to watch this mess. But you know, hey, I'm gonna be optimistic and I'm gonna say let's go two to two over the next over the next. Uh, four games and let's hope, right? And if you really don't feel like hoping, then just pray. Because I think those are the only two solutions we have right now to these guys figuring this mess out. Yeah, man. Like I said, I just don't go into these games expecting to win anymore, and that is a problem. That's why my panic meter was so high earlier in the show. Can't be that way for the last four. It absolutely cannot. You have to go in there and show me something. Throw a punch and maintain the leads that you build. And that'll have to come from everybody on the team. That'll have to come from from the head coach. I see. I know what you're talking about, Trey. Uh, and uh, and yeah. So I'm just I'm I'm astonished that uh, they've lost these last four. But you know, like I said, I'm optimistic that you can win at least three of these last four. Maybe yeah, as tentatively as I am saying it. And hopefully it comes true. I wouldn't doubt it doesn't. I'm gonna give one, I'm gonna give JT last last word on this last comment from T Money. Who says y'all are caught up in the white hype? Hate to say it, and I'm not racist. I, I guess like how, right? Like, like how, right? Her, 
how are we caught up in the white? I, I mean, she is one of the best college basketball players that ever do it. And I get it, right? Because, listen, I'll be the first to tell you that when it comes to professional basketball in the NBA, yes, a lot of things are about race. And a lot of times, if you find well, this a, is about race, too. Oh, well, 100 percent was. Yeah, this. Yes. It 100 percent. Well, 100 percent partially was about that, too. And this and this actually reminds people of. Uh, if you watch on ESPN Classic, Duke and UNLV in the 90s, when you had Duke and UNLV who represented, I mean, UNLV team with Stacey Ogman and them represented a, a completely different segment of America where people got behind it. And that Duke team also represented a different segment of America, too. It's it's the, the same thing. I think the difference here, though, is that the talent level and what you're seeing out there is so far above 99.9% .9 of other college basketball players, players out there that there's a lot of this that's undeniable when you talk about how good she is and how remarkable she is. Now, if you want to say, she, is she getting an extra, is, is she getting additional press because she's white and because she's straight and because she kind of bucks the trend of your traditional basketball players and, and that's created marketability for her and exposure for her? I can't deny that, right? But on the same note, you also cannot deny the talent and the skill and everything she does. I mean, even I mean, even as a passer, she's an elite passer. I mean, at the collegiate level, she's an elite passer at this point, too. She doesn't just get out there and chuck buckets. She handles the ball well, even though tonight she was turning it over left and right in that fourth quarter. But, I mean, I just – I don't think that race alone is elevating her to this position. It, it certainly doesn't. And I would 100% I would would take that fight. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think so. I, I do think, yeah, there is a de there, but there, I will say, there's definitely, and it's probably a discussion for you know Saturday morning on G's and Q's. There's definitely a racial component to how this is this is thought about. And again, I, I like I said, I just said there are a lot of people who were on the LSU train, they got on the South Carolina train. And I don't, did you guys see that that clip that came out from the Miami Heat where like they were asking who's gonna win, and it was just it was like all the white players said Iowa. And all like Duncan Robs and Iowa, uh, yeah. what's the man's name? Like, you know, it, uh, what's Ivy yeah. Ivy yeah. Hockey is Iowa? You know, everybody that, you know, and and everybody else was on was on the other train. I think there was one guy, and it was they was they said it was I can't remember who it was that, that picked Iowa. Like, he saved the video because it was it was definitely along those lines. Think, that, okay, so what I I'll just be real quick on this. What I think makes her different and sets her apart from a lot of these other talents that we talked top, top ten from from women's basketball. She's a lot more aesthetically pleasing as a basketball player than a, a mm. lot of these girls who just back down other girls and lay it up. True. Like, come on. And now. Like, bigger, you, or, right. Yeah. And you're just bigger or just, just rebound the ball better. Like, come on now. She's actually scoring like somebody we, us NBA eyes like to watch. Well, so that's what it is. That's, that's your bag Twitter. Hey, I can not. So that's why hey. Kyrie is more skilled than Giannis. I got to this bag. That sounds, that sounds a lot like bag Twitter. I like, well, like she got she got she has more of a bag yeah, than exactly. than Car Cardoso who and Cardoso tonight was I mean to me just as impactful as oh, yeah. as Clark. because she was but again it was because she was bigger and mm -hmm. they couldn't do nothing with her but bigger you know, she was she was bigger she was thicker bigger. that's what it is one thing I will one thing I will uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't have said bigger and thicker right but I was talking about just a big body oh, right you, but at the end of the day oh, I mean. You. The thing about Caitlin Clark that we do have to remember too is her team stinks. Yes. Stinks. This team does not make the tournament without her. Her team is trash. And the way she played and elevated this team, they were literally outmatched after that first round. Like, let's be clear here. They were outmatched from a talent perspective after that first round. There's no question about that. Um, yeah. So no, I'm I am i am with you. I'm with you there. Yeah, but I'm gonna let you I'm gonna be, I'm gonna let you slide yeah, now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm talking to the chat. Like y'all got. I, yeah, I'm, if yeah, I'm not yeah, right, yeah. it's fine. Like you, you can have the right answer. Go ahead. Um, but yeah. So anyway, the Bucks lose it. Um, if Bucks lose it tonight, they don't get the win. One twenty two, one on nine. Uh, I think we're on it. Uh, any any final thoughts there from from JT, and then we'll, we'll wrap this thing up. <laughs> nah, man. I took nope. the bait last time. We ain't doing this. Um, you have anything? Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Well, like I said, man, the Bucks is you got to come out Tuesday night. No, there's no NBA tomorrow. I don't know what they're doing. They need they need to do they 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 got to get this thing together, man. I mean, I don't know. You playing the Boston Celtics? I don't know who the Boston Celtics are going to bring out tomorrow. I wonder what they're going to. Excuse me on Tuesday. I wonder what they're going to look like. Um and 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 kind of the the roster that 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 they show up with. But I don't know. Maybe they do come out and go for blood and and, and go to really beat down the Bucks and say, yeah, like like yeah, y'all 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 are cooked. Y'all are done. Y'all are done. Maybe they do that. I don't know. 
Um, and I, and there's no way you could if the if the boss Boston Celtics go on Tuesday night with a full healthy roster and they play and everybody plays, I don't think there's anybody in the world who's gonna tell you they think the Bucks are gonna win that game. I don't think they are. I don't think they are. And and that's on a night, and that's on a night where the Magic are playing the Rockets, like you talked about. So yeah, in in theory, in theory, the if the Bucks lose and the Magic win, there would be a statistical tie. Um, after Tuesday night for the um, for for second place in the East, so I don't know I don't know who has the tiebreaker. I think the Bucks already beat Orlando once. Did the Bucks beat Orlando, or did, I think the Bucks beat Orlando oh, the first time. Know. I think they're one and one, yeah. But there, but there's two games coming up, and so we'll we'll see kind of how it goes. Uh, again, we appreciate everybody for listening, watching, um, doing what you do, and staying with us here at the Cream City Crossover. Man, we really appreciate it. We appreciate all the likes, comments, subscriptions, please. Okay, and Todd says it's one one, so okay. We'll see what happens. Um, again, we really appreciate it. Um, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend about the Cream City crossover. We come at you coming in the room every single night after every single Bucks game. Um, and, and this thing just continues to get bigger and bigger, better and better. As we hasten to the playoffs, we're going to thank our sponsors tonight, Lofts of Daily M. Johnson. We need defense where? Off the court. Call my guy, Daily M. Johnson, 608-893-8370. Zero. Uh, yeah, man. And um, he's giving you that good uh, that, that good practical uh, criminal defense and, and all those good, good things. So please uh, give him a call if you need any legal advice on the, uh, in, the in the criminal defense, TROs, uh, those type of things. Comes highly recommended from the guru himself. Um, remember, this has been a uh, Cream City Media Group production. From the Guru Track Crossbow the Third, JT, Chris King. Hey, if we are your enemy, it is only because we dare to tell you the truth. Don't take no wood nickels. Courage. <laughs>